This week, I wanna talk about the MSI Vector 16 and why I was wrong about this laptop. So I've made a lot of videos about this thing, Pretty much with every video, I'm trying to find a reason to not return this laptop. I'm still able to return it until the end of this month, but I just want to like it. I want to love this laptop. On paper, it looks like it should be great, but one of the big things that I've been pretty critical of is the 8940HX. Um, with my initial benchmarks, there was like the battery bug, which made me think that that CPU ended up having terrible performance. And then more recently, I ended up comparing DLAA to DLSS performance on this laptop. And I ended up seeing that the 0.1% uh, lows didn't really get very much uplift, which to me makes me think that the CPU just isn't able to put out any more frames. And that's why we end up still having really bad 0.1% lows. So Overall, I'm trying to find a reason to like this laptop. I've talked to MSI support about the battery bug. They ended up saying that they think it's probably a hardware issue and will not be able to be fixed. And then they also said with the AMD overclocking software in the BIOS, that there's probably no chance that that's ever going to get fixed either. So if you buy this laptop, you are getting it how it is and you should just assume that nothing is going to get fixed down the line. Caveats and all, you should just know that this is what you're getting. Now, if you actually want to do stuff with like undervolting and stuff like that, I have confirmed that the universal X86 tuning utility works. I'm probably never gonna use this. I don't really like doing stuff with software, but somebody requested that I download it. I downloaded it, I undervolted it. I did get a little bit better performance with the same thermals. So that is an option if you want for this laptop. And then the other thing that I finally decided to do that I was kind of debating whether or not it would be worth it is I did a RAM upgrade. And the reason why I wasn't gonna do it is because nobody can really afford RAM right now, but I was curious if upgrading the RAM would help with the CPU performance, because a lot of cases, when you are CPU limited, it can also be because the RAM is the problem. So by getting better RAM, you could actually reduce some of your CPU bottleneck. And the RAM that I used is going to be this G Skills kit of 32 gigabytes, 4800 CL34. So when we're looking at DDR5 in a 216 gigabyte configuration, and we check for the first world latency, which is essentially the effective latency of the RAM, this is actually the lowest latency kit that you can get, and it's also super versatile. I've put this kit into my Acer Nitro 5, which can only run base spec DDR5, which is 4800, and it ended up giving me a ton more performance in that laptop. I've also used it in a couple of the Minis Forum uh, motherboards that are for desktop, but they're using laptop components, and it's good, it's very versatile RAM. It's also very low latency. And one of the charts that I wanna take a look at is going to be just like a latency comparison. So up at the top, this is the RAM that I am going to be testing in this video. Very low latency as you can see. Basically the formula that you get this is you take the cast latency divided by the frequency and then you multiply by 2000 and that gives you your real latency. The RAM that comes with the Vector 16 is this 5600 CL42. Um, the problem though is even though this 15 nanoseconds is pretty good latency, in this laptop with the 8940HX processor, it can't run 5600, so it ends up having to run 5200. So it down clocks the frequency, but then still has the same cast latency, which ends up giving us a worse overall real latency. And then at the bottom, I just added this. This was the RAM that I got on my basically like top spec uh, Lenovo Legion 5i Pro. It came with 6400 CL52. And uh, yeah, if we look at that, it actually has the worst latency out of all of these. So I guess the takeaway from this is don't always focus on the frequency. I know some games are going to be very frequency dependent, but it's also good to just look at the actual real latency of a RAM kit, because like you'll see in my benchmarks, this kit ends up giving us a ton more performance. So the things that I want you to take away from this is that you're buying this laptop as is, and then maybe in like three years when RAM prices stabilize, you can end up picking up the kit that I have and you can end up seeing the performance benefit that I will be showing you. Getting straight into the benchmark summary, this is going to be the balanced summary. So it's basically, I went into the user profile in the BIOS, I selected balanced, and then I ended up going into the MSI center, selected balanced there as well with the discrete GPU mode. And then I also am using DLSS balanced in all of the games. I will get into the individual game benchmarks. I just didn't want to bury the lead. I wanted to show you guys what kind of uplift I got from this RAM upgrade. And overall, I'm very happy with it. Um, this data isn't 100% directly comparable. Some of it's a little bit older, but um, the main reason is I don't have the Legion 5i Pro anymore to test. With that laptop, that had a 275HX processor, a 5070 Ti, 
and then yeah, it had the higher frequency RAM, but you can see that now the MSI Vector 16 beats it in all of those categories. And I definitely think that using the balanced profile in the MSI Center is the best call because it is just so much quieter. Like we'll get into the extreme performance benchmarks. It's, uh, it's more performance, but it's for a lot louder fan noise. And this is just very nice for me. It shows that with the 0.1% uh, lows, you can end up getting a 9.5% increase just from doing this. So if you're happy with the performance right now in like two, three, four, however many years it takes for RAM prices to get cheaper again, you can end up doing a RAM upgrade and end up seeing, you know, like a 9.5% increase to your 0.1% lows, which is just good to see. And that was the thing that I was most worried about in this laptop. But let's take a look at the individual game benchmarks for these presets. First up is Call of Duty Warzone. And this is it, boys. This is the reason. This is why I'm not returning the laptop. Holy smokes, man. We now match the average FPS of the Legion 5i Pro with way better 1% 0.1% lows. This is my favorite game. This is the game I play the most. Nuff said, this is the reason why I'm keeping this laptop moving into 2026. It's not all sunshine and rainbows though for the MSI Vector 16 with the RAM upgrade. In Lords of the Fallen, we can see that the Lenovo Legion 5i Pro ends up taking the top spot. But um, overall, I'm still happy with the MSI Vector 16. And uh, yeah, the performance uplift that we see from the base model is still pretty good. It's a similar story in Hogwarts Legacy. Here we can see the Lenovo 5i Pro at the top of the leaderboard again. MSI Vector 16 does have uh, better 0.1% lows with the RAM upgrade. And if we're just comparing the MSI Vector 16 before and after the RAM upgrade, I'm very happy with the uplift that we got across the average 1% and 0.1% lows. In Cyberpunk 2077 in Dogtown, we can see the MSI Vector 16 with and without the RAM upgrade end up taking the top two spots. And yeah, overall, not the biggest uplift, but still great performance in this game. In Cyberpunk 2077, in the built-in benchmark, again, we see the MSI Vector 16 before and after the RAM upgrade in the top two spots. And then, yeah, the uplift between them is still pretty noticeable, but not as big as in some of the titles. In Forza Horizon 5, we see absolutely insane uplift in the average FPS. Unfortunately, it doesn't correlate to the 1% and 0.1% lows, but it's still great to see this much of a performance increase from just upgrading the RAM on the MSI Vector 16. Finally, in Black Myth Wukong, we see that before and after the RAM upgrade, we have pretty similar performance with the MSI Vector 16. And again, they're taking the top two spots. The next thing that I want to go over is the performance benchmarks. So it's basically the same as before. This is my benchmark summary using the performance user scenario in the BIOS using the extreme performance profile in the MSI Center with Cooler Boost enabled and then discrete GPU mode and then using DLSS performance in all of the game benchmarks. And as you can see, fantastic uplift in the average 1% and 0.1% lows with the RAM upgrade. And this just makes me feel really good knowing that in the future, if I need to, I can just run this thing all out, fans loud, and still get good performance. Getting into the individual benchmarks with these settings, we can see again, fantastic uplift in Warzone. Like I said, this is the game I care the most about. I'm really happy to see this amount of performance uplift just from the RAM upgrade. And it's just, it's confirmed that I'm keeping this laptop because of this game. In Lords of the Fallen, we have pretty good uplift in the average and 1% lows, but unfortunately the 0.1% lows don't really budge in this game. Hogwarts Legacy doesn't see any uplift in the average FPS, but it does see a pretty good bump in the 0.1% lows, which is what this game has an issue with when you are in Hogsmeade. So it's good to see that we still are getting a performance benefit, even if it isn't in the average FPS. In Cyberpunk 2077 in Dogtown, basically these are just a push. It's like the same results. We didn't see any benefit from the RAM upgrade, which is pretty unfortunate, but you're not going to see winners in every game. In the built-in benchmark for Cyberpunk 2077, we see a good bump across the board. And this is because even though built-in benchmarks are typically more GPU intensive, because we are running DLSS performance, we're kind of taking that, that GPU workload out of the equation and we end up seeing a really nice increase in the 1%, 0.1% and average FPS. In Forza Horizon 5, this was a game that with the stock RAM that comes with the MSI Vector 16, I ended up recommending not to push the uh, the performance this high with DLSS performance because we ended up seeing a regression in the 0.1% uh, lows. It ended up just not being worth it. It's more worth it to have a lower average frame rate and then more consistent 0.1% lows. 
but we see that is completely alleviated with the RAM upgrade. We end up seeing just a fantastic average FPS, a fantastic 1% low, and then an absolutely amazing 0.1% low because like we talked about, the RAM and the CPU go hand in hand, and when you have very good low latency RAM, it allows you to get the most out of your CPU, and we're seeing that in Forza Horizon 5. Finally, in Black Myth Wukong, we can see a really nice bump in the 0.1% lows, and then yeah, just pretty good bump in the 1% and average FPS for this game. Next thing I wanna get into is just comparing the uh, DLSS performance results to the DLSS balanced results, just to see how they compare after the RAM upgrade. And as we can see with the 32 gigabytes of 4800 CL34, these are the uh, benchmark summary results for the DLSS performance and DLSS balanced that we just looked at. We can see fantastic uplift in the average FPS, good uplift in the 1% lows, and then the 0.1% lows are okay. It's still nice to see an uplift, but overall, Fantastic. I think the way that I'm going to be running this, because if you think about it, up on the top, we were using Cooler Boost, crazy loud. It's full fan, full time, like it's so, so loud. Whereas DLSS Balanced was just, you can't modify the fan curve. It just does its own thing. It runs at like the highest performance it can within the temperature threshold of the CPU. And man, it is nice. It's not very loud at all. Very enjoyable for playing the gameplay without having a headset on. And it's definitely how I'm going to be running this laptop with my RAM upgrade. The final thing I wanna take a look at is the upgrades that I made. So after I did this video, I decided that I wanted to upgrade the storage on this laptop. I've talked about this in the past. This laptop does support two 2230 drives, but it comes with a 2280 drive. So it's a very stupid design. You would pretty much either have to buy two 2230 drives and put them in there, which they're usually not as good drives as a 2280. They usually don't have as high of an endurance rating. So definitely what I ended up doing was just using a uh, higher capacity 2280 drive. And overall, this is my price before when I just bought the laptop stock from uh, Walmart, ended up being $1,398.18 after tax. With the MSI Vector after I did my upgrades, it ended up costing me $1,612.54. You have to understand though that the uh, RAM that I ended up purchasing, I got it back in July of 2024. And then the storage, man, I got that back in like uh, October of 2023. That was originally for my PS5. So definitely not the prices you're going to pay now, but I just want you to see this for prices that you should try to look for in the future. When it comes to the individual prices I paid for the RAM and the storage upgrade, for the G-Skill kit, I ended up getting that for $97.46 after tax, and then for the Crucial Drive, I ended up getting this for $116.90. So definitely not the prices they are now. You're not gonna buy the most budget 5070 Ti laptop and then spend over $600 on just like upgrades for it. The point of this was just showing you guys the performance you can get in the future once the prices of RAM and SSDs get back to normal. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was just kind of a look to the potential of this laptop and probably one of the biggest flaws is going to be the RAM that it comes with. It really shows you how important RAM is in a laptop for CPU performance. And I'm working on a video where I'm gonna show the performance impacts of optimizing your RAM sub timings in a desktop CPU. And depending on the results I get from that, I might actually try to do it in this laptop as well. But That'll do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you next week.